there is no template for how to pick your college. Ultimately, where you decide to go is your choice, which is what makes this process so fun. Hi guys, my name is Martina and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about how I picked my college. I am currently a freshman at SUNY New Paltz, which was my top choice, but there was a lot that went into me going there. I've been meaning to film this video for months now, but if you are like me and started researching colleges really early in life, you'll understand that it's really hard to summarize your entire thought process in one video. Before I proceed into the real meat of this video, I would like to provide some vital background regarding my mindset to not only the process but college in general. The first time that I explicitly stated that I wanted to dorm, I was 10. I grew up around a lot of family members that dormed primarily because they all attend college in Poland where if you want a strong education you move from your small town to the city. In the state of New York, it's vice versa. When you want a dorm, you go from the city to a small town. Not only did I want to go dorm though, I wanted to go out of state, which in the States is incredibly expensive. For a few years, starting in like middle school, it was Chicago, so Illinois, and then Utah. Then I had brief glimpses of Texas, California, Florida, and eventually I settled on Penn State. Mind you, at this time I really wanted to be a business major and that school has a really strong program for that. After some surface level research, my mommy and I decided that it was doable. And then some time had passed and we realized that it actually wasn't realistic for us. So I started to research SUNYs, which are state universities of New York. Now, I don't remember a distinctive moment in which I found New Paltz, but I do know that from my sophomore year forward, I was dead set on going there. I had a few friends who were two years older than me at my high school. One of them I managed the boys lacrosse team with and they were going to New Paltz, but I know that by the time I was like seriously talking to them, it was about like specifics, so finances and things like that. Um, so I really don't know when this idea was like solidified on its own. Around my junior year, college became a serious topic of conversation in my household. And because my mom works in the medical field, a lot of her patients and their parents gave her the advice that I should attend a CUNY, which is a city university of New York, for the first two years to fulfill all of my GE requirements for a way cheaper price and then transfer to a SUNY. Ultimately, my plan was to graduate from SUNY New Paltz. And although I was upset that I would have to negotiate part of my dream, there was a plus side to it, which was that I could stay at home and work and save up money by what is still my dream car, which is a white Jeep Wrangler. And then I could transfer and dorm and have this full package college experience. And then I actually went through a very severe phase of not wanting to attend college at all. The idea of negotiating it just made me lose motivation. I had struggled, and still do, um, pretty severely with my mental health from the age of 10. So college and dorming was something that I always kind of held out for. If you know, you know. Um, and to know that I wasn't going to have that change of environment as soon as I thought I would made it all lose value. I, you know, tussled around with the idea of like enlisting or just doing internships or working at a minimum wage job until I could figure something out. I wasn't allowed to do that. So I began talking to my mommy more and more about it and we concluded that I would stay at home for a year, she would still save some money, I would up my game and save a lot more money, still buy a car, and then still transfer. Um, and I actually was really good with this plan. I had a very strict budget 
plan in mind that I was following through with, but it ended up flopping. My senior year came and I started my applications. So I began shuffling through all of the CUNYs, which are city universities of New York. And originally I wanted to go to Brooklyn College really badly. It had the same vibe as New Paltz people-wise, but the commute was incredibly far. And although I was promised that if I stayed in the city for school, I would get a car, this wasn't something that was like guaranteed to me. And because my mom and I hadn't had real serious conversations about it, I kind of had a feeling that it wouldn't happen. So I began to explore other options. My mom really wanted me to go to Baruch because I was a business management major or wanted to be. Um, but I never really liked how niche that school was. It's really hard to like explore there just because everyone is a business major. So I don't know, it never really appealed to me. And then eventually I was really looking at Queens College. It was a pretty close commute to my house and also had a really good like undecided program. So it kind of just became like the best fit for the time being. And simultaneously, I also developed this really heavy fascination for Binghamton. A lot of people in my area are really inclined to go there and I really didn't have a hold for like why I wanted to go there. I think I was just influenced. So then my plan became to transfer to Binghamton later on instead of New Paltz. I also did play around with the idea of a few private schools, primarily St. John's just because I had a lot of dance performances there and I really liked that it had a campus atmosphere, um, St. Joe's and also St. Francis. The problem with all those schools though is that the tuition alone is incredibly expensive. I know that when I got into St. John's they gave me a very good scholarship and I still would be paying like $20,000 a year on top of whatever else it would cost for me to get there. So I like very quickly scratched that. This was also a very confusing time for me because I was getting acceptances to all these away schools and I wasn't even excited about them. Like, New Paltz had been my dream for a long time and I remember literally getting the envelope and I was just like, okay, cool. And then I like put it in my bookshelf and didn't touch it for months. And then I had this revelation. I was laying in my bed, which is over there. I'm currently home for Easter break, which isn't really break because I'm skipping classes tomorrow, but it's my break. And I was like, I need to go dorm. I was like, I'm gonna go insane if I stay here. And this is not at all anything to do with my mom. It's just a very natural feeling to at the age of 18 years old, want complete freedom over your life. And she understood this just because she had experienced that same thing at my age, which is why she also left like two cities over for college instead of one city over. And then I got an email from Bing that my admissions decision had been decided. Literally in the span of a minute. I was like, this is a sign from God, I'm going to go to Binghamton, this is great, and I got rejected. Out of 14 schools, it was my only like blatant rejection where it wasn't like a wait list or anything like that, and it struck me heavy. I called my friends, I was like, did you guys get yours? Most of them didn't get in, um, and I just remember crying, and I was really upset over a school that I wasn't you know, deep down in love with. So this led me to the conclusion that I needed to dorm at the school that I had actually had my eyes on for years prior, which was New Paltz. But I kind of buried this feeling deep down because I had already communicated with my mom what we were doing and I felt childish just being like, oh, it was a sign and I should go here and blah, blah, blah. Like, let me disregard everything I've planned. And then a few weeks before the national deadline, so May 1st, my cousin 
went to go tour New Paltz and my aunt was like, well, you know what, since you want to transfer, just come look at it, come take a look. And I went and I loved it. It was just, I'm like getting chills. Ooh. It was just this feeling of like, I need to be here in a few months. I see myself nowhere else um, and I will thrive here. Mind you, I was literally before the tour, like days away from committing to Queens and I was just really pissy about it and I was like, whatever. I really didn't think that a tour would influence me that much. And I know a lot of people don't have that experience. Like I remember talking to my cousin and she was like, you know, I never just like went to a school and was like, this is exactly where I want to be. So it's definitely not an experience that I can guarantee to everybody, but if you've had it, you've had it and it's pretty cool. Following that, you know, was the whole like confirmation process of like putting my deposits down, attending orientation, doing online seminars, all that jazz. But I know that what you guys really came here for is kind of the list of priorities that helped me really narrow down to the school. So this is what they were. Mind you, everybody's priorities are different. I just think these are the ones that like collectively um, not only have I found to be the most important, but people around me have found to be really important as well. The first one is definitely dorming or commuting. I think eliminating distance helps you narrow down to a lot less schools. And then it's definitely money. Something that I will say is a lot of people say like, oh, well, you can go to these other schools and get these scholarships. And if you can do that, fantastic, great. But just like a word of advice, when you get some of these academic scholarships and stuff like that, there are things you have to uphold. So if your scholarship requires you to get a 3.0 and then your GPA is a 2.9, you lose that scholarship. And I never really wanted to go to a school where I would risk my place of admissions over a grade like that because that would have broke me. And I also was aware of the fact that like I do suffer with mental illnesses, so I can't like predict if I'm going to be depressed or not. And although I do generally have high functioning depression, that's manifests, you know, in different ways every time. Then aside from dorming or commuting, there is the factor of distance in terms of like how far it is from home. So if you are a commuter, you do not want to be commuting more than 40 minutes a day, one way. Um, I know people that have done more and they do it, but they always complain about it. So that's kind of my rule of thumb. And then in terms of dorming, just be aware of the fact that like when you go home for holidays or if you wanna take a bus home, the commute is not always the easiest. So like for me, that helped me eliminate schools like Buffalo and stuff like that because I did not wanna to have to do a eight, 10 hour commute just to come home for Christmas or for Easter. Um, so if you are going to school far away, be aware of the fact that you are not going to be home that often and that could be a positive or that could be a negative then it definitely comes down to the programs so i applied as a business management major or like a slight variation of that to all of my schools but actually going into college i went in undecided because over the summer i just did not know what i wanted to do and i wanted to be able to explore a lot of different options New Paltz had a really strong program for that. It definitely is a liberal arts school and a lot more humanities based, but I knew that that was more so where I was gonna find myself. So I narrowed it down to like humanities and then undecided because there are some liberal arts schools like Sarah Lawrence College where yes, it's a liberal arts school, but you don't actually have a major. Everyone just gets a liberal arts degree and you are going to school to get a degree, so this is something super important to consider. Then there's the social aspect. I've always been a super social person, and I always knew that when I was in college, I wanted to have that party atmosphere, um, or just like the 
option to experience it. I grew up in the city and if you grew up here you know that party culture is very different. Um, it's usually a lot more intimate and like especially now when I compare myself or my upbringing to like those of everybody who grew up on Long Island because there's a lot of them at SUNY's you very quickly realize that it's just very different and they're more used to like big house parties and you're more used to like five to ten people crammed into your apartment um, and like you know turning down the music before 10 p.m. so your neighbor doesn't come knocking super important please consider the distance that your campus is from the town I never thought about this piece of advice until a friend of mine told me it and for reference New Paltz is about a three minute walk from town whereas Binghamton if you want to go to town it's like a 15 minute uber ride I've been told more or less so you don't think that this is a big deal until you like need to go to the grocery store you need to go to the pharmacy and you need to you know take that 15 minute uber ride it's a lot easier to be able to walk if you have a car great but i know most campuses don't allow you to have a car freshman year so it's definitely something to consider i mean the schools with bigger campuses like stony brook as well the kids definitely live a lot more on campus but if you want to kind of feel more like you're living in the area that you're going to school in then consider that strongly and then lastly there's a super welcoming environment not only in town but on campus which i knew would allow me to mold myself into the person that i've always wanted to be and i've managed to do that in a lot of ways and i have plans for the future of what i want to do and what i want to look like which is really exciting um whereas there are other schools that definitely have a lot more of a judgmental atmosphere and it's definitely like you fit into this one genre of person which if that's your vibe cool and if you like go to one of these schools and you're like wow everyone's like me and i love this so much that's great i just personally knew that i wanted to change a lot in college and i knew that new Paltz would be a place that i could do that at now there definitely are a lot of other factors to consider like extracurriculars i however didn't really prioritize those just because i was super extracurricular heavy in high school and middle school just throughout my entire childhood which was great and i loved it and it made me a lot of great memories but it also burned me out a lot so going into my fall semester i told myself literally no signing up for extracurriculars school is your number one priority and i ended up acing my fall semester and hopefully my spring semester um too which was great if that is something that you're looking for though like you want there to be a dance program definitely look at that and my best piece of advice is really if you want to get a sense of the school dm people that go to that school some of them will lie and be like wow it's really great here and like it's but there's a lot of people like me personally that are super honest at least that's what i've been told but also you usually just like catch a vibe from people which is really neat. That is all that I have to say on how I picked my college and my little tidbits of advice or a rough template for how to do it. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Also make sure to follow my Instagram, link is always in the description. If you are looking at New Paltz as an option, please feel free to DM me. I have people DM me all the time and I have no problem taking 10, 15, 20 minutes out of my day to, you know, help you make this decision. Remember to take care of yourselves. I know this time can be super stressful, especially if you're a procrastinator. And good luck, guys. Happy college decision season.